So the Yankees sign another pitcher while they're waiting for another pitcher. <laughs> Let's get into it. Okay, so last couple of weeks have gone by. Yankees have made some significant upgrades offensively, but they've also been bludgeoned on the pitching side, not only with the trades that they've made to bring in Alex Verdugo from the Red Sox or Juan Soto and Trent Christian from the Padres, but they also lost a bunch of lunch, a bunch of bodies to the Rule 5 draft. So Cashman's doing his usual around behind-the-scenes quiet work, trying to replenish some of what was um, – Gutted the last the last two weeks, so they just brought in twenty four year old left handed pitcher. I'm gonna see if I can pronounce this right. Odanier Mosqueda, twenty four year old pitcher, left handed pitcher from Venezuela. Okay, yeah, it was it was he brought up with the Red Sox system and uh, kind of developed. He's got up to the AAA so far. He was in a little inconsistent last year, but he's got a career body of work of eighteen and eighteen in one hundred ninety six games, four twenty one ERA. 331 innings pitch and 410 strikeouts. So he strikes out more than in, uh, uh, one batter per inning. So he's got a whip of 1.31. So it's a perfect project for Matt Blake to work on while the Yankees try to add some guys on the cheap to the farm with that aren't far from the major leagues. Just like yesterday's trade with the Dodgers, the infield prospect that the Yankees brought, he's at AAA too. So they're one step away from contributing to the major league level on the cheap. And this guy's got multiple controllable years too. So, because the fact is we've probably found one of the uh, Peralta's replacement on the cheap yesterday from the Dodgers. Right. Um, and we don't know whether they're going to keep Tommy Canely or Jonathan Lewisigo yet. They bring, they value at about $8 million total between the two of them. We don't know if the Yankees are going to replace them or not because we still wait and we're still waiting for the Yankees to sign or a, uh, Get, have a decision, get a decision from Yoshinobu Yamamoto, okay? He's going to be meeting with several more teams, Red Sox, the Blue Jays. He met with the Yankees brass yesterday, and apparently they're scheduling a second meeting in Yankee Stadium so they can give him the tour of New York and, uh, and all that good stuff. So that's a good sign. But the fact is the Dodgers just created a bunch of money with Shohei Otani's deferment, right, deferred $680 million, which is essentially a legitimate way to – skirt taxes that was agreed upon by owners and uh, players and players union in the, in the last collective bargaining agreements, the last CBA. So unlimited deferred money. So now he's going to get taxed on the much lower rate of 2 million a year for the next 10 years while he makes 68 million a year afterward and enjoys a much lower taxation. So a slick way of skirting the system, but they've done it and it, it opens up all kinds of money for the Dodgers. It hurts them later on, but the one in, in the immediate future, it gives them an opportunity to at least make a competitive offer for Yoshinobu Yamamoto. I expect the Mets to be formidable offers too. And I expect the A&G, even Jim Bowden's predicting the Yankees get him at nine years, 304 million, but that still remains to be seen. It may be higher. It may be lower. We don't know yet. So once that news comes out, I'll get it to you. So for, so, so for some reason you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that button right now. Make sure you sub and make sure you hit the notification button too. That way you're in front of the line. When the news comes in, you're right there to get it. Okay, I thank you so much for that. I really do. So Yankees had a pitcher, young left-handed arm. Again, I think Cashman's going to add some more pitchers while he, while he continues to look for a, probably a power arm to close the games as well. Maybe a Jordan Hicks, maybe a, maybe the trade market, somebody like Devin Williams. I mean, classic uh, from the Indians, I think is going to cost too much. He's got five years of control for $30 million. So if they somehow get him, they're going to be chunking a lot of farm away. So the Yankees have already given up a bunch of arms. Now it's time to, if they're going to make more trades, they need to you know dig in from their position player depth, which they have a lot of too. But that said, they don't necessarily have to get Classe. Classe is the sexy name. Devin Williams is a, is a really good name, too. He's got two years of control versus five. But then you got guys like Jordan Hicks, a power army throws 100-plus with a good arsenal of pitches who could be had just for money and free agency. So we'll see what the Yankees do. It's going to be really, really interesting. So, And let me know what your thoughts are in terms of Otani and his deferred money. It's crazy. I went live last night, and I, and I thank everybody for coming on and giving me their feedback on it. And uh, we were talking about this, and again, it's it, this whatever the money is. If it's you know the Dodgers themselves are paying him two million dollars a year for the next ten years, and then he's going to make sixty-eight million a year for the ten years after that. 
401k when he's not playing, when he's likely retired at that point. So he's not doing business in California, so he won't have to essentially be subject to the state taxes in California. So that's just how it is, and especially the new t the, the new collective bargaining threshold and the new collective bargaining agreement creates opportunities for players. Okay, and they unfortunately enjoy benefits of loopholes and stuff like that that us regular folk don't necessarily get to enjoy. So that's just a fact. Okay. People can like it or not, but that's that's the way it is. And and you know, I, I've gotten some people already, well, we should defer money on Juan Soto. Well, it's a, you know, it's it theoretically it's a fun topic to think about, but I'll just point something out. Scott Boris's agent is 70 years old. I don't think he's gonna want to wait until he's 80 or 80 plus to start getting paid on it. So I can't see them deferring money. I can see them giving a longer contract with a similar number between 650 and 700. Let's just say 14 years, right? 13 years at 650 is 50 per. 14 years at 700 is 50 per. It's still 20 million a year less than Shohei Otani's making. Okay, and like I said yesterday too, Shohei Otani's a generational player. He's getting generational player money. Juan Soto is also a generational player who happens to be years young. We get five prime years at it. So. They both have unique skill sets. And Scott Boris now has an argument to ask for the same money that Shohei Otani got, just in a longer contract. He will ask. I'm not saying he'll get it, but he's going to ask. I'm very, very confident of that one. So, But let me know what your thoughts are there, too. And, and again, the, I think the age thing does factor in here. Joel Wolf, who represents um, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, is not really going to have to worry about that. It's too much stuff. He's much younger than Scott Boris is. Okay, he's the Jedi Master of Sports Agents, but he's also 70 years old. He's approaching retirement age. And again, he doesn't really need to work anymore because he's probably the richest sports agent in the world, but um, he still does it. And he still gets these guys good contracts. He still gets these guys good length, good average annual value. And he still, players want to be represented by him because of what he does for them. So can't blame him for that. Can't blame him for that. But let me know what you think about this young pitcher that the Yankees picked up. I expect them to get some more. I think, you know, again, we replaced Wandy Peralta most likely on the cheap from the left-handed side yesterday with Gonzalez from the Dodgers. And then we've got another depth piece here on the left-handed side too that they're replenishing too. So on the cheap with controllable years. And I expect Brian Cashman to make several more of these signings over the next couple of months this offseason. And I think, personally, I think it's Yamamoto is the next domino that needs to fall for them. And that kind of determines how they approach the rest of the offseason. So hopefully that gets locked up sooner than later. He's going to be meeting with more teams. And I think he wants to honor his commitment to meet with all the teams, and then he'll make his decision. So whenever that happens, it happens. We just got to be patient there, unfortunately. And it was a painful uh, situation waiting for Swan Soto news to come out. We'll just have to patiently wait or impatiently wait for the Yamamoto news to come out. So, But that's what we got right now. Let me know what you think. Load up the comments. Talk to you all later.